So no matter where, when, how, or what you're shooting, any and everything can be cinematic. Let's talk about it. All right, so what is the deal, everybody? It is, of course, your boy Valandis back with yet another video. And in today's video, I thought maybe we'd sit down and talk about why everything and anything can be cinematic if you want it to be. And now I get it. The word cinematic is overused within this space and it bothers, that word bothers a lot of people. When I go out to shoot and film, whether that's in my home, in somebody else's home, out in the field, the only thing that's on my mind is how cinematic can I make this look? We tend to focus on the very obvious and very clear cinematic scenes that we see within movies like the dark rooms with the half lit face and um very beautiful lighting and it's shot wide open we we tend to focus on that a lot but if you watch any movie or any video here shot on youtube you notice that there are sequences that we don't really necessarily pay too much attention to but they are also still very cinematic and i'm here to tell you that anything can be cinematic whether that's cleaning your toilet lighting a candle pouring a bowl of cereal, making breakfast, pouring up a drink. No matter what it is, it can be cinematic if you consider a few things. So despite popular belief, some people may think that shooting everything wide open immediately makes everything more cinematic. And in some cases that is true, and I'm all for people doing whatever they want. So if that's what people believe is going to make a shot cinematic, then by all means, do that. But I'm here to tell you that something can be cinematic no matter what aperture you shoot it at, no matter what lens you shoot it on, no matter what camera you shoot it on. But to me, those are probably the least interesting and important things when it comes to making something cinematic. The things that I go based on in terms of cinematics is lighting, composition, and honestly sound design. So lighting, number one, to me, probably the most important thing when it comes to making something cinematic. And that's because lighting adds depth, a sense of emotion, and it makes for a more interesting shot depending on how the lighting is. If you guys follow this channel closely, you know that I've made many videos talking about lighting. I use natural light for a lot of my videos, so you don't necessarily need any lights to make something cinematic or something beautiful because all of these videos and even the videos that I've showed you in this video were all shot with just natural light. It's all about finding light and setting yourself or your subject within that light. If you watch my lighting video with natural light, you know that I talked about something called a cinematic triangle. If you didn't see that video, I'll link it, but a cinematic triangle is basically just placing your subject in between your light and your camera. And this cinematic triangle doesn't have to be done within everything that you do to make it cinematic. But to me, I try to do this as many times as I can and more often than not, because to me that feels the most cinematic when I'm making videos. I think it adds a little bit more depth and just makes things look really, really good in terms of shadows and light areas of your image. Because to me, the light and dark parts of your image is what makes something cinematic. So yeah, working with light and learning light is probably one of the most important things in terms of making something cinematic. And you don't need lights. You can use natural light like the sun. It's all about learning how to work with that and learning where it is and where it's going and, and how it lights spaces and not faces. So yeah right now i'm learning a lot on how to work with artificial lighting because i want to start doing more creative things and um using the light to my advantage to light things how i want them to be lit specifically so 
yeah, it's super fun and um, I'm learning a lot of stuff. But yeah, lighting is super important. Probably the most important thing when trying to make something cinematic. Next thing that I want to talk about is compositions. Again, if you've been following this channel for a minute, you know that again, compositions is one of my favorite things to talk about and one of my favorite things to kind of play with. It's very easy to just walk into a room or walk outside and pick up a camera and point it at something. And not every single composition you do has to be interesting or this super creative thing that nobody has ever thought of. I do very regular compositions all the time. And I think sometimes people overcomplicate trying to make something look cool and cinematic and interesting. When I'm shooting with myself or other people or any subject for that matter, I always trying to find compositions, even if they're real regular, that adds depth to that image. For example, there's a reason why I shoot these YouTube videos sitting right here in this chair and not over there on that couch. Because as you can see in this example, there's depth to this image. The lighting, like I said, the cinematic triangle is happening right now. There's some depth, there's things behind me. There's some foreground with the mic. There's a lot of things going on that makes this composition not super interesting, but at least it's pleasing to look at. But I set this up here because there's a lot of leading lines leading your eyes directly to me like these pictures back here they all lead right to my head these ones lead right to my head and to me that makes the most sense for making videos in this office like i mentioned earlier a lot of people may try to get away with terrible compositions by shooting something at a very low aperture which is also fine i'm a big fan of things being shot at a low aperture i don't do that probably 75 percent of the time i'm shooting at f4 f5.6 and higher i rarely shoot at the lowest aperture my lens can go because if you understand aperture and you understand some of these lenses you can get the same bokeh and same out of focus parts depending on how your compositions are set up and again like i said there's nothing wrong with shooting at a wide aperture there's absolutely nothing wrong with it i wish people would stop acting like this like that's a, a big deal because at the end of the day who cares if it's not your film or your videos then why bother but yeah finding compositions and setting up compositions is probably one of the most interesting and fun things that i do within these videos and my videos in general it's probably my favorite thing to do and like i said i'm a real simple man a lot of things can be very very simple we don't need to overcomplicate compositions we don't need to overcomplicate lighting because it's okay to do things exactly as how you're I guess supposed to do them another thing that makes images and anything cinematic is camera movement i won't talk too much about that again i have a video on camera movement but camera movements and the way the camera moves with subjects and throughout scenes clearly those things add to the cinematics of something i'm not going to talk about that a lot in this video because i make all these videos by myself with the camera being on a tripod but just because something is on a tripod and the camera isn't moving doesn't mean it's not cinematic so but yeah to me the last thing that makes something very cinematic is the sound design when i first started making videos and getting into like filmmaking and stuff like that sound design was probably the last thing on my mind to me my camera had a microphone on it and in my mind that was decently good so i didn't necessarily care about sound design but as i started getting more into filmmaking and doing these videos and stuff i've realized that sound design is actually very very important in some of these videos i don't know if you guys have noticed it before but some of the sounds that are throughout some of these videos aren't even real well they're real sounds i just didn't make them for example originally this scene sounded like this But to me, once that's taken away and some more professional sounding outside noises are added, a lighter flick is added, a little ruffle of the jacket is added, then some of these things start looking better because they sound better, if that makes sense. I do record most of these sounds on my own with a boom mic, but for the sounds that I can't get, I go to Epidemic Sound, which this video is not sponsored by Epidemic Sound, but I do go to Epidemic Sound to get a lot of my sound effects for these videos. In recent videos, whether that was me riding a bike or my homie listening to the Walkman or the record player or whatever it may be, all of these sounds were added to add to the cinematics of all of these videos.
And I think audio and sound design may be a second thought or last thought with a lot of filmmakers, but I will say that adding that stuff in and like kind of paying attention to that and taking just like the extra time to add those sounds in will change a lot of your videos. But even with big Hollywood films and movies and short films, they also add sounds to make their movies more cinematic. And if you really, really, really pay attention, you could probably spot a few times where they added a sound and it wasn't an actual sound. But yeah, man, it's not hard to make something cinematic. And like I said, anything and everything can be cinematic if you just take the time out to, you know, slow down and think about some things a little bit further than just like picking up your camera and shooting something. So yeah, with that being said, that's probably gonna wrap up this video i appreciate you guys sticking around listening to me talk always appreciate it you guys are the best with that being said i'm gonna get up out of here and i'm gonna go do some shit man i'm gonna see y'all in the next one man let's go do some shit you know the vibes let's get it